Hey there, I want to talk about residency strategies today. So I've been off flying around. I popped out of Ecuador. I had to go down there for some for some fun, and I went to Burning Man. Now it's time to get back to uh, some actual work. So let's talk about residency strategies. So living here in the U.S., um, some people might refer to me as a prepper. I think it's a little overselling. I'm not like hunkering down waiting for zombies. I just keep some supplies around for uh, earthquakes because I live up in the Oregon area and other um, natural disasters. So I always have some food and water on hand, uh, you know, a couple weeks, three, four months, maybe. Okay, maybe I'm a prepper. But the idea when it comes to residents, residency strategies holds true. You don't want to be beholden to just one spot to live. Now, I live in the U.S., pretty awesome country. You know, many would say the best in the world. Many would argue that. We're not going to get into that here. It's a damn fine country, though. But when it comes to taxes, it's not so, so fine. And as I've talked about before, I want to lower my tax rate because there's two ways to build up your wealth. Make a whole bunch of money. I do okay. Save money. So I'm right now working on the save money strategy, which is cutting my tax rate because that is my number one expense right now. I'm a working slob. I make money off of earned income, W-2. So my number one expense, by far, twice as much as the next thing, uh, actually more than all, all those combined, is taxes. So I talked about moving to uh, Mexico and getting Mexico residency. There's a video that I have out there how I went about that. That's going to take some maintenance over time. I've got to reapply for it. Hopefully, I'll get permanent residency in Mexico at some point. But I really do believe in the strategy of uh, two is one and one is none. So if you just have one external residency, that's not enough. You really need at least two. Others go crazy. They've got passports all over the place. I'm not that rich. So for uh, my tax strategy, I want to have at least two uh, permanent residencies. I've got one temporary now. I'm working on a second temporary, Ecuador. And I'll put up some videos about that. There's That's a comp far more complicated than Mexico, but it's certainly quite interesting. I've learned a lot doing it. So I'll put up a series of videos on that. Right now, let's just talk about strategy. So like I said, I've got Mexico, I'm working on Ecuador. These will be my primary two residencies outside of the US. I don't want just one, because let's say you're doing everything on tourist visas, which you can do. People have been running tourist visas only to Mexico for years. Well, you know what? Mexico is cracking down on that now, and they're denying uh, multiple reentries on tourist visas. But let's say you have some crazy random thing, you know, that could, you know, this might be far fetched. Let's say we have a pandemic. I know, crazy, right? We have a pandemic, and suddenly tourists are barred from all the countries. Well, if you had Mexican residency or Ecuadorian residency, you can still pop to these countries. You can still get out of the U.S. The last thing you want to do is be basing your entire tax-saving strategy on being an expat and suddenly be stuck in the U.S. And then you end up with a multi-tens of thousand dollar tax bill that you weren't planning on. That ain't cool. So you want to have a secondary plan, just not one, but at least two places where you can duck out to, in my opinion, at least. So... There are countries that offer digital nomad visas. In fact, Ecuador has one. I don't think Ecuador did theirs very well. Uh, with Ecuador, you have to show a two-year contract, if I remember from work. And I don't know about your work, but my work ain't cutting me a two-year contract. And I, live, I work in the tech industry. Their idea of job security is you didn't get laid off this time. You have job security. So you're not going to get a two-year contract. So I don't think the digital nomad visa from Ecuador is that great. But others have done reasonable digital nomad visas. For example, Colombia sounds like it has a nice one. Not quite working yet, but I'm keeping an eye on that. That might be my third residency spot. Uh, but instead of applying for actual residency, which could lead to permanent residency and potentially citizenship, uh, Ecuador wouldn't be a good one for citizenship for me because you have to, I believe, give up your U.S. Uh, citizenship for that. Double check me on that one. But obviously, I'm not going to give up my U.S. citizenship. Mexico, on the other hand, quite possible. Got to learn Spanish to take a test. Colombia, the digital nomad visa is a nice place to just hang out for a year or two. 
that could be really awesome because you can go visit. It's not a path to permanent residency. It's not a path to citizenship, but who cares? The tax requirements in Colombia are so high, you don't want to be there more than 180 days a year anyways. But it's nice to have that flexibility to move in and out that the uh, visas give you. That's why I don't like just going on tourist visas. Now, if I want to pop over to Europe, I'm not going to stay in Europe for any great length of time. Popping over there on a tourist visa, that's perfectly fine. You can stay over there for 90 days. You don't want to be over there too long given their tax strategies. So that's perfectly great. But in these Latin American countries, where you're in the same time zone as the U.S., they have very favorable taxes, many of them, Colombia not so much, but great tax strategies that work well for digital nomads, then, yeah, you want to be able to stay there a long time. You don't want to be tied to a tourist visa. You want to be able to come and go as you please and not be hung up. And I think it's perfectly reasonable for these countries to demand that you get residency. Tourist visas seldom have any requirements for being able to support yourself. The residency visas do. And just as in the U.S., these foreign countries, they don't want people who can't take care of themselves showing up down there. So having these residency visas is perfectly reasonable demand, I believe, on their part. I kind of wish the U.S. would be a little bit more demanding on that as well. So um, I generally favor the residencies over the, over the digital nomads because I want to get that residency. I want to get that permanent residency so I've got a place to go and hang my hat if all else fails. I want that luxury of being able to come and go even during weird times like the pandemic. So that's sort of my strategy. Like I said, I've got Mexican residency and I'm going to be, and I'm working on Ecuador. It's been a long haul. I'm going to do some videos on that. So stay tuned. Hopefully I'll have some Ecuadorian residency visas coming up real soon. So thanks for listening. Bye. Where is it?